these countries are saying, well, we didn't do a good job. We're not doing a good job. We haven't figured out what to do. So the answer to declining birth rates is people who don't share values flooding our country. And the option of the fact that we can't take care of our vets or our aging population or people with health problems is, why don't you just kill yourself? Are Canadians awake to that being exactly what's happening? Or is this something that they're seeing as, you know, like kind of like with lockdowns, are people, uh, you know, accepting this? I'm, I'm really concerned here, Adesa. Well, most people didn't really know about it. I, I didn't even really know about it or, or think about it. However, actually, because of the expansion, um, interestingly enough, the state run media. So our mainstream news here is all like CNN. We have nothing like you guys or Fox or anything like that. It's all super lefty, lefty. And the Lib government pays our media so they can't say anything against them. Um, but it's it's a disaster because there have been so many people that are begging for private and public like they do in some european countries where you can go in and if you have the money to spend four or five thousand dollars on a small surgery twenty thousand for a bigger one hundred thousand for another one we want them to open up to that doctors here are begging for it doctors here have opened clinics and done it they've been shut down so what's happening now is whether you're rich or poor nobody can get a bed and they want to off you whereas the richer population could relieve the beds of the people who don't have the money to pay for their own um, care and it would be it would be a complete um win-win so I would like it if a guy can spend $100,000 on a surgery to help me if I can't. And they're so against privatizing. It's, it's, it's so seedy up here. And a lot of the doctors have tried it. I remember I paid a couple grand to go get an MRI because I didn't want to uh, wait a year. And it was great. Do I like it that I had to pay that? No, but you just buy less clothes. Don't take that trip. So I don't know why we're not doing it like Europe. And up here, we're told how bad the American system is, how people have to pay so much per month for their system. And I agree, I've seen my mom's American and the bills they pay are crazy. But if they could just do what the European countries are doing, it's so successful, but it's all about control. They want control. They don't want to see doctors make a lot of money, um, lose control. It's, they can't skim as easily. It's That's just, yeah, We're, everyone's pissed off. And no, people don't really know about MAID until now, but the mainstream news actually is starting to cover the fact that a lot of doctors are up in arms, a lot of people are up in arms, and it's actually become an issue on the mainstream news, which I find incredible because the liberal government pays our state-run media to shut up. But it's, I think right. it's because Trudeau hasn't, quite put it through yet, even though they're still doing it behind the scenes, he hasn't put it through. So all of a sudden these outside forces come to Canada and say, you need to do this. You need to do this. And it's some federal experts. Where do they come from? Well, probably the WHO, Theresa Tam, the UN, the WEF. There's outside forces that are running Canada. Trudeau does not run Canada. He is uh, Klaus Schwab's puppet. It's not a secret. And I really feel that Canada is the head of the New World Order and British Columbia, where I live, is the head of the snake of the New World Order because they just created a bill. It is so demonic and dystopian. People are rallying outside. People are trying to do recalls on these politicians. This Bill 36, it just became law. If a doctor, because they've seen over the last few years, doctors speaking out against lockdowns, doctors speaking out about the safety of, you know, the jab and all that. If, if a doctor speaks out from now on about anything they feel is not right, that goes against the government narrative, it doesn't matter if it's vaccines, euthanasia, anything, they go to jail and get a $200,000 fine. A panel of specialists decide the fate of this doctor, no trial just straight to jail, $200,000 fine. If you say anything against the state run Medicare system. So I got a phone call from a doctor. I happened to interview about all this. And he said, look, there's a, a, a private convention happening, invite only. 
They don't want the public to know about it. It's actually here in my province. And they asked if I wanted to come. They said, you can't interview us. You can't tape anything, but you can make anonymous notes. Just don't use the doctor's names. And these doctors are getting together, freaking out about Bill 36, this made act. Um, they're seeing that something is seriously not right here. And I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, doctors are actually trying to recall the premier here in BC who is trying to put Bill 36 through. It did go through its law, but there's one more sort of flaky process where they make it look like there's one more chance for people to say no to it. But we've already talked to politicians um, on the inside and they said it's going through. They they don't care what we think. Well, does it? This is interesting because like you, st you said, you know, the public opinion, I think people are a little bit um, probably dismayed when they find out the, the reality, but the, the difficulty is is getting people to actually know what's going on and or getting people to care about what's going on. It seems like there's a lull in the West where people just sort of believe their government works for them and um, that we haven't moved into some sort of an iconoclastic, you know, totalitarian uh, visage where we actually work for our government now and we provide tax dollars that are not used for us. We are ex disposable assets. We're experiments. Um, and and I know I'd get in trouble for saying this, but it's like, you know, totalitarians have tried Holocaust many times. I mean, you know, you have. Uh, you know, a lot of genocides throughout history and, and re ethnic cleansings and racial cleansings, minority cleansings. I mean, these things are not uncommon. Um, I know we focus on one in history because of who writes the history books, but the reality is, is that the, the form of totalitarianism may have changed, but the, the, the methods may look different, but the reality of the heart and the mind of humanity remains the same. And the end goal is still that there are some people who are useless. And that's why even with very minor cleansings, like uh, thought cleansings, for instance, instance on the internet where they don't want conservative values. They don't want right wing values. Like I'm not a conservative myself, but I love conservative ideas. I think most of them are the correct, you know, nature or former pathway forward. And I sure as hell hate progress, most progressive ideas, but because there are some good ones, you know, I mean, some progresses can be good. I don't believe that pro progressives should be shut down. I don't believe they should not be allowed to speak. But if we're, they're willing to shut down our voice, they're willing to shut down our, our sight, right, through censorship, what we can see, they're willing to shut down our movement through lockdowns. I mean, these are very rudimentary and basic violations of human rights. These are the things they're willing to show us. These are the things they're, they're, they're more than open to, to, to displaying with pride, with an egotistical fervor. And so it's, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, what is next? The next thing is, is for them to kill us and to make it seem like we're the ones choosing to do so. I would say this would be abuse. Just like I don't think it makes sense for a, you know, non-mentally, uh, you know, people don't like the word retarded, but whether disabled person uh, to, you know, you would question, right? There's a 50 year old man with a 18 year old Down syndrome girl. You're going to go, hey, does she really know what's going on sexually here? Like, are you taking advantage of her? What's actually going on when you're taking someone who's severely depressed with anxiety, who literally probably wants to kill themselves and then you give them a path to kill themselves. I find that not to only be murder, but to be sick abuse, to be taking advantage of the vulnerable. And that's dangerous for us society. Uh, do you think these bills are going to officially pass that this is going to become a standard practice? Or do you think that Canada has a chance to fight against this? I mean, it, it, it sounds dismal, Des, I'm telling you that from an American in, an, in another country and seeing how asleep people really are. I don't have a lot of hope, but maybe you, you think differently. I think they will pass. I think they're going to try everything. And the only way we're going to be able to stop it is by the people just saying no. Now, we've all been told our whole lives to eat certain fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and we've got to stay in good health. But according to Dr. Stephen Gundry, a world-renowned heart surgeon, many so-called health foods in the American diet actually contain a dangerous toxin that could be expanding your waistline. Now, this toxin causes micro tears to form in your fragile intestinal wall, allowing bacterial waste and products to seep into your body. Now, this harmful condition is known as leaky gut. It's affecting millions of people nationwide. Warning signs include weight gain, fatigue, digestive discomfort, stiff, anky joints, and even skin problems. 
Sound like a lot of us? Well, Dr. Gundry explains that these side effects are often mistaken for normal signs of aging because leaky gut usually develops over a matter of years and sometimes even decades. But I can assure you the damage caused by these so-called health foods is far from normal. The good news is the problem can easily be fixed right now from your home, and it's very simple. All you have to know is which foods are actually healthy and which foods contain the hidden toxin. He goes on to explain, now after years of research, Dr. Gundry has decided to release an informative video to the public, free and uninterrupted, showcasing exactly which foods you need to avoid. Go to gutcleanseprotocol.com slash offensive or click the link in the description below. That's gutcleanseprotocol.com slash offensive, all lowercase, G-U-T-C-L-E-A-N-S-E, P-R-O-T-O-C-O-L dot com slash offensive. Check it out right now. Click the link in the description and find out if that toxin's in your food and how to make better choices today.